Hey, it's Melina, and you're watching Girl in the Verse, the video podcast, where we explore the exciting world of decentralized technology and the people driving its innovation. What the F is an NFT and why do they matter? What about decentralization and Web3 or cryptocurrency? Is it all a scam? or is it here to stay? If you've ever asked yourself these questions, know that you are not alone. I myself have asked a lot of questions, anywhere between owning a digital wallet, minting NFTs, dealing with gas fees, and a lot more. Whether you're a seasoned crypto veteran or just getting started on your journey into the wild west of Web3, this podcast is for you. My name is Melina. I am the founder of Girl in the Verse. My job really is to have conversations with founders and builders and artists and businesses and a lot more people in this space who have entered Web3, talk about their journey and why all of them believe that this is the future. This is it, friends. It's right now and we are living it. And I'm so honored to be here to have this stage with you to ask the right questions. Okay, without further ado, let's dive right in. <laughs> Today we are joined by a very special guest, Mac, who has been working in the Web3 space for almost four years. That's a long time. Mac is an expert in security and has been working very hard to find ways to improve security in this space. Now, I think we can all relate to being a little bit nervous um, when we first entered Web3, started buying our first NFTs, right, minting out these projects. And we've been hearing so many horror stories, right, out there about people having their assets stolen. That's like... I think that would be my worst nightmare right now. Enough to make anyone here nervous, right? We're hearing a lot of people losing their assets just by potentially minting out another project. But Mac here has been on the front lines working to make the Web3 place safer, right? For all of us. And as someone who has personally been compromised, Mac is going to share us some perspectives here and importance of security in this space. So Mac, just to start, first of all, thank you for being here. Can you tell us a bit about what got you started in the Web3 space and what was your horror story? Oh God, I hate thinking about this. So this was uh, about two years ago. Uh, there was a project called BDAC for short. So this project was on the Solana Art NFT homepage it was verified quote unquote they were broadcast everywhere and like even me i was broadcasting them out for like three months uh it was on solana and this is now the reason i hate solana um <laughs> so, makes sense yeah i made a soul flare wallet i sent fifteen hundred dollars over to it and you know bought soul with it mint time rolls around i click mint like went to the website through the Soulflare wallet, clicked mint, nothing happened. Clicked it again, nothing happened. So anytime I clicked mint, it was just transferring money straight to the scammers wallets. You know, there was a bunch of red flags looking back that I should have known, but that's when I started kind of getting serious about um, security and space. I just, if I can keep people from feeling that crappy feeling from getting rugged, that's, that's the whole purpose of it. So what brought you... What brought you into really navigating the security? I know you were compromised and and honestly, just even losing one dollar, I feel like that's already a lot. So losing fifteen hundred dollars, it's just it's it's horrifying, really. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess what really got me into the security aspect of it was I wanted to know how it happened, like where my money was, if there was any possibility of me getting it back. Um, I wanted to learn every aspect. So I could, like I said, help others. So I, you know, learned how to read uh, EtherScan and not just that, but now I use a whole conglomerate of like 27 different tools um, between software and uh, different online things to actually, you know, track down scammers, um, you know, having to learn wow. the different functions of the contract that way, you know, 
what that function does with the money. So you know if it creates an internal or external transaction, how it handles the funds, where it's sending them, all that good stuff. Ooh, it's a lot. It's And you know what? <laughs> Every time I see a tweet, like if we think of who was the latest, I remember, Mac, we just talked about him, Crypto Novo, Crypto I believe. Crypto Novo 311, yeah. Exactly. He had just lost, what was it, like his punks, his like big assets here. Yeah, it's just, you know, every time I read those tweets, I'm always thinking, okay, I today is going to be the day I will set up better wallets and create burner wallets and these cold wallets and hot wallets and whatnot. And guess what? Every time I tell myself I'm going to do it, I never do it. And I'm sure I'm not the only one because crypto know well, this happened to him. It will happen to me. I'm going to do this. And then I never set it up. So I'm really happy that today you're going to show us one way. There's many ways, but one of the ways we can protect ourselves by creating these different wallets, doing this. And I think in your case, this was the easiest way to do it safely, right? Creating all these different MetaMasks. Why don't you, before maybe doing the step-by-step, -step, explain to us your system? I'm saying your system because... Everyone has different ways and people will say, well, I do it this way. I do it that way. But you put out a really good thread this week. And I want you to maybe share with us why you chose to go this route and then, and then guide us through that system. If okay, I'm actually going to guide you through it. So I can explain how I set everything up, but this will kind of help others realize how easy it is as well. Okay. Um, so then, then you'll guide me and why don't you maybe start off by explaining to us why you've decided to do it this way and what is this way? And then just maybe summarize it and then, and then we'll do the step-by-step. -step. Not a problem. I, I decided to do it this way because this is literally the easiest way to make a new wallet on a new seed phrase. Um, you know, most people, they have one wallet, and they just add a new wallet underneath of the exact same seed phrase. If your seed phrase gets compromised, then every string of wallets in that whole string is now compromised, which is not good. So this is just a guide to help people, you know, through at least the wallet making process. Now, for those who don't understand, Mac, why hey, if, should we be creating different wallets? So you need to create wallets for the different functions you have. So, you know, one wallet... In the thread I wrote, I, you know, named them mint, um, sell, and hold, I guess. It's so you use them for different functions. That way you're never compromising, like, your high-value assets. Uh, the websites themselves, there's um, a, a known bug now. It, it's been reported as of last night that just connecting to the website, it's, it's a front. So it looks like a wallet connect, but in the background, what it's doing is actually signing a personal signed signature and giving them access to anything you have open allowances on. So wild to me. Right. So you're saying that these websites, the new, the new form of scamming or, you know, removing assets, it's, it looks like a website, but in reality, it's just grabbing all your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as you click connect, it's, it's actually signing so your best way is really setting up different MetaMask wallets. I said, I am still that person. Every time I mint a project, every time someone wants to send me something or I want to send something to someone, I literally double, triple, quadruple check it because I'm petrified, right? Because once you do something and you click OK, it's done. And there's no one there. You know, there's no customer service. No one is around to tell you, oh, okay, you made a mistake. We'll fix that for you, right? That's the danger. And that's what gets people scared about entering the space. So I have another question for you, Mac, before we dive in. But is when you say we're completely compromised, so let's say I have a MetaMask wallet and I have created all these different accounts. And now one of them is, you know, for my ledger, right? Like I'm attaching it to my, my ledger. If that MetaMask wallet gets compromised, is my ledger as well compromised? Uh, if you did it correctly, then no. So when you import a ledger to MetaMask, you're essentially just connecting it. If you import the seed phrase from your ledger to MetaMask, then you did it incorrectly. Wow. So that's only if I, when setting it up with through my ledger account, I had to put in 
the seed phrases. If I did not, I did it correctly and it wouldn't be compromised. Yes. Okay. We've got, we've got some comments here from Ryan saying, don't go interacting with random things sent to your wallet either. Oh no, we don't want to do that. Right, Mac? Debatably. Like there used to be uh, a flaw in the contract, the Wyvern contract, where if you interacted, like even hiding it, um, and this was just one flaw and it's been patched. I don't want to scare anyone. Like, like if you get random crap sent to you, it's perfectly acceptable to hide it. Um, as long as you don't try to send it to another wallet or like click on the link that they always have in them, just hide it, ignore it, forget about it. Okay. Uh, Mac, I think I'm ready to start this. And truthfully, I think there's no better way to do this than by doing it yourself. Right? So. Um, you're going to walk me through it and I'll still be petrified, but you're going to walk me through it. And I have complete faith that we can do this together. So if you scroll to the bottom, you see it says add with the little plus sign. Uh huh. Uh, so since this is a hold wallet, you're going to want to make it some kind of blue to let you know, like this is cold. All right. And then name it right there. Yep. 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 And now you're going to want to add uh, MetaMask. io. I download for Chrome. Yes, ma'am. It's really, really extremely simple to make another profile. Go ahead and just click get started. Okay. I'll do, I just want to repeat, look what it says. I know a lot of the times we don't read, but it tells us never collect keys, addresses, transactions, balances, hashes, or any personal information. Never collect your full IP address and never sell data for profit. So that's, that's good to know. All right, so create a wallet. And why are we choosing this one again, Mac? Because you want a new seed phrase. You do not want the same old seed phrase that you've had. You want a clean one on a new wallet, starting fresh. You're going to click next on that. And then here's the part. Don't click that box. Yeah. So everyone, when you get to this screen, you're going to click that box. You're going to write down write down your seed phrase do not save it into something like it says up there like one password because all of those services are getting compromised so just be safe write it down put it in a safe spot and you can even split it up between six words written down one place six words written down another place and store them in different locations do not download it to your computer because then if you get compromised, then they have your seed phrase. So write it down is the best suggestion. And now that is what she's going to be doing right now. She's going to click the box to reveal it. Uh, Chris already hit your screen. So, but what she's doing right now, she's going to be writing that down. And then on the screen after that, she's going to have to click on those words to verify that she actually wrote the C phrase down. MetaMask will let you go to the next screen. And for everybody who's not watching the live stream, we're watching her double check each word. <laughs> and she was feverishly writing down each word and then looking down and looking up. It literally freaks me out. So I'm going on to the next step and I'm going to confirm my secret phrase. And I think too, Mac, it's important to know the order of these words, right? Yes, yes. You have to click them in the order that you wrote them down. Okay, it says, congratulations, I passed the test. Woohoo! All this ETH. Go. All this ETH. Wow, look at that. <laughs> and look, there is your, uh, your wallet uh, address up there at the top. Now, if you click on those three dots on the right, right underneath the circle, you can go to account details. People are going to want to click on that pencil right there. And then you name that the same thing, like matching the profile that you're creating. So we're making a hold one. You would want to name that hold. So just to recap everything, Mac, we should have a, a mint hold sell wallet. It, yes, at a minimum. So yeah. what 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 is the best strategy? Is it obviously having a couple of MetaMask wallets, and then what, a couple of different ledgers as well? I mean, it's all personal preference. Um, if you have a large number of assets, yes, I would definitely eventually get them stored on different ledgers. 
um, different long-term cold storage, different hardware wallets. So you can use a ledger or anything similar to that. Um, I know they have a ton of them out there. Like PayPal has one that's thumbprint guarded, um, different various ones, you know, ledgers coming out with ledger stacks, which is actually pretty cool. I'm glad I was one of the early ones to get that. Um, so yeah, there's a ton of different ways, but yes, if you have high value assets, you do not want to leave them in a hot wallet, AKA a minting wallet. You don't, Anything that's high value, you want separated on a separate seed phrase from a wallet that you're connecting to websites, connecting to contracts, you know, minting from different things. It's, you don't want that risk. So yes, break them up, put them in long-term storage if they're valued high enough. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Mac. Let me just check the comments here. Just wanted to know if anybody had any questions. Mac and I would love to hear from you. How are you staying safe and not getting your assets stolen? Drop it in the comments below. As always, if you dig this episode, you can find me everywhere on social media, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, <laughs> all of them, okay? So you can always go find me at Girl in the Verse and you can go and find Mac. Your handle is? It is at you making me crazy thank you so much everyone thank you so much mac take care have a good day everyone